Welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Angela, and today we are spending a cozy fall day book shopping at Barnes & Noble. I just arrived at Barnes because there is one item that I want to pick up for work. It's a plain tanned line journal set that comes in a three pack and I usually fill up these floppy little notebooks with field notes. And that's the only thing I intend to buy today, but every time I pop into Barnes & Noble on my days off, I feel compelled to browse. This store is so big and inviting and full of books, so I thought I'd take you along with me today and we can check out some titles on this chilly autumn evening. The weather has cooled these past few weeks and the crowns of trees are pumpkin orange and cranberry red and leaves are rustling in crisp winds. This feels like the perfect day to spend at a bookstore. It is time for a cozy little book haul. If you hear tiny animal noises in the background, that's just Pygmalion living life. I didn't end up purchasing What If 2 by Randall Monroe, even though I spent a bit of time stooped in the nonfiction section, leafing through the illustrations in this particular book. I've listened to the first two books in this pop science series, What If and How To, are collections of unserious questions that Randall Monroe answers quite seriously. He pulls records and studies and equations. His earnestness in the responses to the questions in What If and How To are what made those books so much fun for me to engage with. Even if you're not big on nonfiction, I really do recommend these titles. I love these books so much. The writing is accessible and the physical books are filled with cute webcomic style illustrations. The audiobooks are also narrated by actor Will Whedon and they are really enjoyable to listen to. And the reason I didn't purchase What If 2 was because the audiobook was available on Libby. I was interested in a lot of books at Barnes & Noble that I had the ability to put on hold at my local library or Barnes digitally and so I maxed out my holds while I was in Barnes and & Noble and decided to try to find a few titles that were not available through my public library system. I got my mini notebooks for work and 
I picked up some other books as well. The first book that I picked up was Near to the Wild Heart by Clarice Lispector. I am normally not a fan of stream of conscious style of writing, but Miss Lispector, oh my goodness, my heart. I have read excerpts of our other novels before and I cannot begin to describe how time feels paused when I'm reading her words. The world around me stills and lines become paragraphs and paragraphs become pages and pages become a chapter and I usually stopped at a chapter because a chapter is all that's offered as a sample on Amazon. So I decided to take a plunge and purchase her debut novel, Near to the Wild Heart, which was published in 1943. And after visiting Barnes & Noble and picking up Near to the Wild Heart, all I wanted to do was sit down in a coffee shop and read this particular title, and I did. But I can't believe I let you slip. I think about it seven days a week and this just can't be how it's supposed to end up. It's not enough. And maybe time will make you fade. But I don't know if I'm ready to just let you go away. Like my friends think I should. Cause what if I just wanna be with you? I'm now halfway through a story that feels like those first moments when you're waking up from a dream. The world is slightly blurry, but crisp thoughts flash into view, startling you into reality. Near to the Wild Heart introduced Brazil to Hurricane Clarice, an unknown 23-year-old who wrote her first book in a tiny rented room. This first novel, the story of the feral, immoral Joanna, announces one of the great careers in 20th century literature. So far, Joanna is steely and introspective. She is clashing contradictions and so self-aware, unabashed curious and questioning. I'm hoping to finish this book this week. I think I'm just gonna have another little coffee shop session and just let myself be absorbed by Clarice Lispector's words. This book contains bursts of poeticisms and that is what is drawing me deep into this story. The plot is not a through line, it's more of a fraying thread. If you love introspective novels that are just so deeply contained within their own thoughts and feelings and emotions, I think you will really enjoy this. And if you want a plot to propel a book forward, I would not recommend this book <laughs> at all. I also picked up Day Tripper by Fabia Moon and Gabrielle Ba, twin brothers who work together as comic book illustrators and writers. The reason I picked this up is because I saw a Goodreads review by Patrick Rothfuss who penned The Name of the Wind, and he said something along the lines of like, damn, this book. This is probably the most profound story he's read in years, and it's a story about stories and beginnings and endings, and that is very near and dear to his heart. And I personally love stories about stories too, so I thought I'd give this one a try. I did not realize when I picked this up that this is a collection of 10 volumes of comics. I thought this was a graphic novel, but it is in fact a trade paperback. The blurb says, what are the most important days of your life? Meet Bras de Oliva Domingos, the miracle child of a world famous Brazilian writer. Bras spends his days penning other people's obituaries and his nights dreaming of becoming a successful author himself, writing the end of other people's stories while his own has barely begun. Each day in Bras's life is like a page from a book. Each one reveals the people and things who have made him who he is. His mother and father his child and his best friend, his first love and the love of his life. And like all great stories, each day has a twist he'll never see coming. I have finished reading all of the volumes of Day Tripper now, and I had mixed feelings about this book right until volumes 9 and 10. For me, while there was a lot that I liked about the first several volumes, especially those slices of Bross's life, the what-ifs, could-bes, and maybes of first loves and friendships, I just, I had the ick a few times while reading this book. Bross's half-sister and his wife look exactly the same. I, I really struggled to tell the difference between them. There was a point in this book where Bross is at a shop and he looks at a girl, he checks her out, he's leaving. It goes on to say, inside he knew it felt right and he knew she was the woman he was going to spend the rest of his life with. He has to tell her. My brain just could not comprehend. He's only seen her once. He's seen her once in a grocery store, in passing. They didn't speak a word to each other and I just thought she's cute to I'm going to spend the rest of my life with this woman is such a jump. Maybe she's not into bras. Like, I think there were other things that were presented as romantic or presented as attraction that I just found creepy in this book. That being said, the color work in this book is so stunning. The colors in this book really set the tone, the mood, the emotions. To me, the colors did so much of the legwork of 
loved this story and kept me immersed in it. And when I got to volumes 9 and 10, I appreciated a lot more of the story. Every volume is non-linear. It doesn't move in a progressive fashion. We get flashes of Frost's life from when he's in his 20s, he's in his 30s, he's in his 40s. He's at these different age points and we see one snapshot of just a day or a few days in his life. And it's about how the moments that we choose as defining really do define us. There is a twist at the end. It's a small twist. You can kind of see it coming, but I did appreciate the twist. And I do think the story is one that will stay with me for quite a while. So those are the two books that I picked up from Barnes & Noble. That tiny stack consumed my entire book buying budget. But I can't wait to sink back into Mute to the Wild Heart by Clarice Lispector, have a little cup of coffee or tea, and read that book until the late midnight hours. Thank you so much for watching and spending the day with me. Bye guys!